Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Few Brain Cells and the host of Taramina's Unoriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Oriented Television. A lot to talk about here this week here. Obviously, um, I'd like to send our congratulations to Rochester Adams. Um, Boys soccer on winning the Division One state championship with a two nothing win against Byron Center. Um, Coach Josh Hickey's team um, performed well against Byron Center. Of course, um, Byron Center got into the state final, knocking off Oxford, um, a team that's also been very experienced on penalty kicks in the semifinals. Adams had to get by Celine, um, winning that one also in penalties. So. You know, congrats. And then Adams, of course, winning that on Division One state championship at Grand Ledge on Saturday. So, congratulations to Rochester Adams on a job well done, giving the OA their second Division One state championship um, of the 2024-2025 school year. So, so that, that is a lot to be, lot to be thankful for. Congratulations to Rochester Adams on their third, on their third Division One state championship in school history. Let's now let's go from soccer. Let's talk football. Obviously, you got the volleyball districts around my blog as well at second right for 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, let's talk about the um the playoffs here for football. I mean, some interesting storylines. Um, most of the red is in it. Um you got the um the two heavyweights of the white are still in it. I've got a blue team still there. Um um, you, know, you got two blue teams still there, and you got one gold team there. Um, we're gonna start from division one through four. Um, I'm gonna break down each game here. Um, obviously, we're gonna start with the um division one games. We're gonna start with um, we're gonna start with Oxford. I mean, when you look at the Wildcats, um, they knocked off Davison 21 14 in a really crazy game. Um, you really look at that game. Luke Johnson had a master game for Oxford. Um, two touchdowns, including the winning score in the fourth quarter. Um, Jack Hendricks, besides one interception he threw, I thought played remarkable. Um, he threw, I mean, he had a big touchdown pass to Jay Katie. Um, that, re that really, um, that really set up, um, that tied the score for Oxford at 14, which led to the, um, which of course, you know, led to their um that big touchdown in the fourth quarter. Um, Oxford's defense had to hold on. They stopped Davison. Um, I think they got a pick that sealed it for him, and that ended up being 21-14 in that um regards. So I watched a little bit of that Davison coverage on DTB. Um, you know, I kind of really thought, you know, they did oh they did a, they did a good job. I thought they did a good job. Um, but I kind of wanted to. See to see how they did, you know what I mean? Like, you know, how they handled, you know what I mean? Because obviously when you look at Davison, they played Warren D. LaSalle, they played Grand Blank. Um, those are the two losses. I mean, they knocked off East Lansing. But Oxford just brings a different method, different philosophy. And you look at, obviously, Oxford praises what Coach Jack Line teaches. Is they... It's similar. I mean, like Oxford, they they want to battle you. They want to play. They want to they play with the chip on their shoulder. They play with passion. I mean, you look at Oxford. You, I mean, like everything's tough in Oxford, and you kind of you kind of look at it, and it showed that game really proved Oxford football. You know, in that game up in Davison. Obviously, you know, Davison's had a lot of success when you look at the state championship um couple I mean, game a couple of years ago. This is a well coached team under Coach Jacob Wiggars. Um but in this game you gotta give Oxford their credit. Their defense was outstanding. Offense played just enough. I thought Jack Hendricks played good, with the exception of that one pick. Um Luke Johnson's Luke Johnson. There's a reason why he's one of the best backs in the league. Um, and now they get to go on to Grand Blank to play uh, a Bobcat team that's really athletic, um, really, um, 
they got a good quarterback. They got a couple good wide receivers. Um, they were very instrumental in their game against um, Davison, but they had a tough loss earlier um, last week, a couple weeks ago when they lost to Romeo, 14-13, and then they bounced back and knocked off um, Lapeer last week. So, you know, but Oxford, I think they got a good chance. I mean, I think Oxford's got a really good chance to do some damage. Um, they could make a serious run. And if they win, I think this will be the first time. I got to go back to my history books with Oxford. Um, the last time they won a district championship. I mean, because I know it's been a while. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that one goes, especially when, you know, Oxford, they're going to be, they're a team that right now I would say is a team that's playing with house money. And a team that plays with house money is always the most dangerous. And this is where I view Oxford. They're a team that's running on house money. I mean, they're not supposed to be here. But here they are. Here they are. And I got a great chance, I think, to win the district championship this week. They just got to go back into Genesee County and play a really good Grand Blank team. And I think they got a chance to do it. So Oxford right now, they're a team that, you know, they're a team that's on a mission right now. And I really believe when I look at Oxford, they can get the job done. They got the talent. They got the pieces. Um, they got good enough wide receivers. Obviously, Katie there, back at receiver is a big deal um, besides his kicking duties. Um, and then you obviously have Jake Champagne there. You have um, Eli Carpenter there. You got, um, you know, so everything that, you know, Coach Eckline said to me when we um, talked before the season started, it's coming true here when you look at Oxford. I don't. I think this team might be better than the 21 team, and that says a lot when you look at Oxford. Um, you know, obviously, and maybe even the 2018 team, and that says a lot there, too. I mean, like, obviously, I mean, like, if Oxford knocks off Grand Blank, you know what I mean, then they would be farther than those two teams, you know, when it comes to postseason. So, you know, so Oxford right now is a team that really – they are believing in themselves right now. They're right now playing at a high level. They're playing good comp Mary football. And I think that's a good recipe for success when you look at what Oxford's been doing. So, you know, for the Wildcats, it's been, it's been a long while. But I think for Oxford fans, this, is good. this could be the start of a deep postseason run for them. I mean, obviously, they saw the success of the soccer team. Obviously, Katie is on that team getting the state semifinals. So, and Oxford's a senior heavy team. I mean, like they're they're that in in basketball, um, they're that in um soccer, they're that in football. They're going to be that in boys basketball this year. I mean, like they're going to be a very senior heavy experienced team. So, you know, so we'll see. I mean, Oxford right now, they're in a good place right now. They're really they're pretty much in a good spot when I look at the Wildcats right now um to make some noise in that division in that in that district. So, you know, obviously winning the Reds a big deal. Um, but you know, for Oxford to win that game like that in Davison, that is not an easy thing to do. And that's a credit to where credits do. So give a credit coach Zach Line and his team knocking off a very good Davison team. Golden opportunity awaits them if they go into Grand Blank in their new stadium and win there. That would say a lot about that team um as we head forward. Um, let's look at the um other side of that. Um of that district. I mean, like you look at them, Adams 44, Stony Creek 14. I mean, I honestly thought, and I, and openly, and I, and I admitted this. I mean, like I thought coming in, this would be a really tight game, but Adams played team comp, comp Mary football. Um, Roman, Roman Kawa. Um, he got a, um, one handed pick six for a touchdown. Um, They've really gelled without Ryland Waters. That is a big deal. Um, Mateo Humbert's really played well. Lashar Tillerson's played well. I mean, their defense has been playing outstanding football. I mean, you really look at Adams and you think about with them is you look at with them, it's just the veer, the veer, it matters, you know, and they're getting good defensive stance as well. They shut down a really good Stony Creek offense with Sam Fogler. 
um, especially with their line with Peyton Rumbler and, Spe and Spencer Beekman, um, shutting those two guys down. Um, it just it showed, you know what I mean, in that game. Adams, you know, is a team that's going to be playoff tested. And you know, Coach Tony Petrino is going to have that, have them ready to go and ready, and ready. And when they showed up, played big time, um, good football against Stony Creek. Um, you know, obviously, you look at Stony Creek. Um, you know, for them this year, um, they got into the playoffs. Um, you know, with the big win, with a couple big wins, the Rochester win was huge. But you know, for Stony Creek, I would consider this season a success. Here's why, because. You have a new coach in Rick Powell taking over. He's bringing in a whole new system, whole new structure, changed everything around the Stony Creek community. He kept some of it, uh, but he changed that whole thing around. They got new uniforms. They got new, um, you know, new, um, a different new helmets. I mean, like, you know, but they came off, knocked, start off good, knocking off Warren Cousineau. Had a tough loss to Lake Orion. Um, and then when they got in the league play, lost to Groves, Harper Woods. Um, Groves and Harper Woods. Big win against Rochester was huge. And knocked off A&T. Um, knocked off Ann Arbor Huron. I mean, so for Stony Creek, you know, this I would say this year for them was a really successful year for them. And considering what else is coming, you look at the sub RC programs. You know, they're, um, I think their JV went undefeated this year. I think the freshman had one loss. Um, so that kind of tells you the direction where Coach Rick Powell has that team going. So for Stony Creek, that says a lot when you look at the, Co at the Cougars heading into next year. It would not surprise me next year, Stony Creek. I mean, they're going to be a really, really dangerous team. Despite losing all those seniors, I mean, this is still going to be a really, really dangerous team. And obviously, the give credit where credit's due, Coach Rick Powell's done a really nice job with that program. So, you know, for Stony Creek, I would consider this season a success for them. Despite the loss to Adams, um, I really like the direction where Stony Creek is going. I think they're going to be really dangerous in the future. And I think they're going to be a team that really makes some noise in the future. I mean, I don't know what division they're going to be in. If they're going to be, a, I think they look ready. I don't know if they're ready yet to be a red team. Um, but, you know, I think they're getting closer. And I really think if they win the division next year, I think that's where I think you're going to put Stony Creek, you know what I mean, in that um, conversation is, you know, but they're gonna have to deal with Harper Woods if um if 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 they're in the same division. So but I would give a lot of credit to where credit's due. Um, you know, Stony Creek is they're a team to be reckoned with, and I think they're gonna be really, really scary um in the future. And that's a, and that's a credit to Coach Rick Powell and his staff, also the the people at Hart Middle School who's developed them, and also the youth levels at Stony Creek, the um, young Cougars um over at um you know, when it comes to their youth levels. And they've done a really nice job developing um, talent over there. And, you know, the players over at Hart Middle School, some at Ruther who come over there, um, they've done a really nice job building that program. So credit where credit's due. I really like the trajectory of Stony Creek. Um, Adams, they're going to be moving on. Um, you know, we're going to preview that game with Clarkston in a little bit. Um, now let's look at the other games here. Clarkston... 34-16 over Lake Orion. Um, Clarkston, when I look at this game here, um, it was pretty evident Clarkston was the better team. It kind of felt like 06 all over again. I mean, when um, Lake Orion had chances to stop Clarkston, didn't do it. Um, I kind of thought the Griffin-Bowman touchdown um, to close out the half, that was the epitome of Lake Orion's season. Um, and I'll talk Lake Orion here in a minute. Um, but when I look at what Clarkson did, I've got to give credit to their offensive line. Um, their offensive line played outstanding. I mean, that's really, and yeah, everybody gets the Bowman twins for credit and obviously, and they do deserve it, but I'm going to give credit here to the offensive line because they're the ones that don't get the recognition. They're the ones that don't get the, you know, they're the ones that don't get like the not notoriety. They don't get all that. 
in that game against Lake Orion, I really thought that the offensive line of Clarkson really dominated that game. They just dominated that game. And their defense played outstanding. They shut down the run, made Lake Orion into a one-dimensional team. Um, you know, and I think really that's what described what happened. Is in that game, I kind of felt Clarkson out, out top Lake Orion. They outcoached him. They just outplayed him. It was, they wanted to be there. I, I felt like Clarkson wanted to be there. And, and you knew they were motivated after what happened in week seven when um, Lake Orion um, beat them 20, 20 and 13. I mean, and I get it. It's hard to beat a team twice in one year. I mean, when I was at Lake Orion my senior year, we beat them twice. And that was not an easy, um, not an easy feat, but it was done. But when I look at this game here, um, Clarkston was just flat out better. I mean, really, that's what it was. Clarkston was just flat out better. Bottom line. And Coach Justin Pintar had a great game plan. Um, executed their game plan well. Their defense, I thought, played well. Um, just a lot of credit to them, just the way that they played. Um, they played hard. They, um, you know, and, and I really think they out-executed Lake Orion, out-coached them, out topped them. I mean, like, bottom line. And, you know, on that play, that Bowman touchdown to close out the half really epitomated Lake Orion's season. I mean, like, really described it in in a nutshell. And, you know, for Clarkson, that's a big, um, you know, for Clarkson, you know, it, it shows, you know what I mean, why that they've been 14-3 and three in their last 17 against Lake Orion. And, you know, and that's really, you know, it, it kills me to say it, but, you know, but, Facts are facts. You look at the stats. I mean, like they, I mean, numbers don't lie. I mean, you look at that. Ever since that late touchdown in 2011, I mean, Clarkson's really showed, you know what I mean? They've been the more dominant team. When you look at it in the last, um, ever in the last 13 years, I mean, that's really been the explanation to that. And you just can't explain it. <laughs> now for Lake Orion. Um, a lot of what ifs. I mean, a lot of what ifs. I mean, what if, you know, T.R. Hill played against Oxford? Um, that's a different outcome there. What if the Lake Orion defense, you know, played better against West Bloomfield? A lot of what ifs there. Um, this, I really think the Celine game was pretty much where everything changed because. You know, you look at it, you're about two minutes away from getting a number one seed, um, you know, and you give up an unbelievable one-handed catch on a fourth down from Tommy Carter, Lincoln Keys, and and um, and he went 80 yards, and they get the two-point conversion um, to win that one eight seven. Now you look at the Griff, the Griffin Bowman touchdown. And what he did, um, duking out at least five, six defenders, um, you know, and that's just that's just bad tackling right there. That's just poor tackling. You know, if he get if you get him down, you're only down 14, 10 at the half, you know, and instead you get Bowman the touchdown and you lose that game and you're down twenty one ten at the half. And that and that's basically it. That was basically it. So when I look at Lake Orion's problems, um, the first one I got to look at is why are you 3-14 and 14 your last 17 against Clarkson? I mean, is it a mental problem? Is it a mental mindset problem? I mean, I'm looking at it, and I'm looking at two problems here. The first one... There's a, there's got to be a problem in the youth levels. There has to be a serious problem there, because when is losing to Clarkston acceptable? When is it? I mean, when did we? When did things change? Was it from that eleven game? You know, and then it trickled down the youth levels and. You know, you look at the youth levels, you know, Clarkson's got three teams down there. 
Um, and then you look in, you know, I mean, it's a development league. It's a developmental problem. So that tells me something right there. You know what I mean? I don't know what's going on down there in the um, younger levels. I, I really don't know. And then when they get the middle school levels, you know what I mean? You know, it, it, it's always been that, you know, and I get it. You know, everybody works hard, develops them. You know what I mean? I get it. But the middle school levels this year, you look at Clarkson's record this year in middle school, I think they were 24-1 and one this year. That kind of tells you something right there. And then, you know, when you look at the freshman JV levels this year, they were tight games. So they were really tight games. But to me, the problem, their one problem is in the youth levels. They've got to get that addressed. The other problem is Lake Orion mentally has got a Clarkson problem. They do. And, you know, you look at, in, in, in most sports, whether it's, I mean, football, you're 3-14 and 14 in your last 17 games. Something's got to change. Something's got to change. I know in basketball, you look at Clarkson's head, Lake Orange's number there, and then it's starting to fester in the, in the volleyball, and then it's starting to try to fester in the girls' basketball. But the problem here is it's the mental mindset. I mean, like, when is accepting losing to Clarkston acceptable? It's not. So, something's got to change. Something's got to change. And when I look at Lake Orion this season for football, I mean, I didn't see that hunger or that grit that they had in years past. I mean, like, you look at, you look at the team last season. That team had some hung, had hunger and had grit. The team went undefeated. But that team still lost to Clarkston. Now, albeit by screwy attentions. But this year's game with Clarkston, Clarkston was just flat out better. That's really what the difference was. So, what now? Is going to be the question for Coach Chris Bell's team this offseason. What now? I think accountability has to be the first thing. Accountability has to be the first thing. If they can address that, um, that's a start. Then you got to fix the Clarkston mess. You got to fix that mess. You got to say, look, we can beat these guys. We can beat these guys. And then if we got to play them again, we got to make adjustments. That's not only players, but coaches as well. Everybody's got to make adjustments. Bottom line in that game against Clarkson, Clarkson made adjustments, and look where it got him. That was the bottom line. But Lake Warren mentally has to get things fixed, especially when they play Clarkson. That not only goes for football, but in most sports. They've got to fix it. Got to. You know, and it's a psychological thing. It is not a physical thing. Presence, it's got to be psychological. That's what it has to be. And that's the bottom line. Okay, West Bloomfield. Um, 49-15 um, winner against Novi. Um, West Bloomfield, they showed where they were at. They showed um, their, um, they showed their um, dominance against Novi. Obviously, you know, you look at the Lakers. They're a team that really... Um, now, they were dominant against Novi. I mean, they had a pick six for a touchdown. I thought Bo Jackson played well. I thought, um, you know, I thought um, Cam Flowers did, Elijah Durham did, Josh Tate. Um, so West Bloomfield, that was kind of like when I look at them, was a, um, a get-back game um, from a really tough loss to Roseville. <laughs> so now they move on and play Novi Detroit Catholic Central. Um, in week, um, next, uh, this coming week. And that's going to be really interesting to see how that one goes. But when I look at the Lakers, um, right now, they're going to have to play their best game if they're going to want to move on to the next round. Because you look at that, on that region, on that regional side, you're looking at either Celine or Belleville. And 
Bell will just put 68 up on Ann Arbor Pioneer. And that's just frightening when you look at it. When you see a team put up 68 on another team. Um, albeit, you know, you look at, you know, Belleville. I mean, Celine right now is a team that's red hot right now, considering they just knocked off Lake Orion emotional game um, two weeks ago. Then they knocked off Northville. Very impressive 37-7 score. So, Belleville and Celine meet, 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 meets up, which should be a really interesting game um, between the Tigers and the Hornets. Uh, albeit, you know, we'll see what happens there in that one. But for West Bloomfield, <laughs> it's about nobody Detroit Catholic Central, and they're a team that's rolling right now. They have been beating people. And this is one of the, and this is one of the Shamrock's top teams I mean, that they've had in a while, and that says a lot right now. That says a lot. And when you look at Nobody Detroit Catholic Central, I think right now when I look at them, you know, them, Belleville, um, the other side of the bracket's wide open considering what happened to Rockford. And Rockford was upset by um, Granville. I still can't believe that one. I'm, I'm still in shock over that game. But Hudsonville didn't look very good. Um against these Kent, well, they didn't look very good at all. I mean, they didn't survive get winning field goal, win that one. But I'm telling you, I think, you know, that side of the bracket's open there. And then this side here, this is the tough part because you think about it, maybe a state semifinal with the Macomb County Powerhouse or Detroit Cast Tech. Now, I'm not sold on Detroit Cast Tech. I'm honest. I'm sorry. I'm not sold on it. But when I look at West Bloomfield, their pass, um, I think they got a shot against nobody Detroit Catholic Central. They're going to have to play really well. And that's not just on the offensive side. Defensively, they're going to have to play well. That's really where the case is. I could see with nobody Detroit Catholic Central is, you know, that should be a really fun matchup. Of, and it could be a shootout. It could be. But we'll see. See how it goes. We, we shall see. And here's another storyline. Bo Jackson returns to Novi. Detroit Catholic Central. So, Shamrocks know him quite well. So, we'll see how that one goes. But West Bloomfield, good win against Novi on the road. Have to go back on the road, back to Novi to take on Novi Detroit Catholic Central. So, that'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. We'll see how that one goes. <laughs> on the Division 2, um, when I look at Division 2, it looks like the favorites mostly won this week. Um, didn't really see much of upsets, um, considering what happened in Division One with Rockford. Um, Groves, no problem with Ferndale, 49-14. Um, when I look at Groves right now, this is a team that's on a mission. They're on a mission. They want to get to Ford Field. Um, you know, they, they showed why. I mean, Ryan Counts has really played well for Groves all season long. Um, their offensive line's been very good. Running game's been really good. Defense has been stout. I mean, you look at Groves, they got the complete package. They really do. Um, Ferndale, for them, it was a great season. Great, great year for, for them, for Coach Eric Royal. Obviously, they were on the bubble. Um, they were on the bubble, trying to get in the playoffs. Had that big Week 9 win against Utica 4-2, winning 10 nothing. To get in the playoffs, unfortunately for them, they got to deal with Groves in the first round, and that was just the, and that was just it. I mean, that was just it. I mean, it was going to be a tall order for them to see if they could pull off the upset. It would have been an unthinkable upset if they would have pulled it off. But you know, and I think honestly, when you look at um, you know, Ferndale, the way that they did, I mean, they had that tough tough week one loss earlier in the year to Mass Heights Lanfear, um, and then they had that um. You know, very tough loss to Abendale. Um And then that big win against A&T was huge for them at the time. And then getting in the playoffs. Um, big accomplishments for Coach Eric Royal. Now, he does lose a lot of talent. He does lose a lot of those, a lot of talent. He loses a lot next year. So, you know, kudos for, kudos for Ferndale this year. Had a great year. Um... You know, and I think they're gonna be they're gonna be fine in the future. I mean, like for Coach Eric Royal and his team, it'd be very interesting to see what they do this offseason. So it'd be really, really interesting to see what they do. 
Um, for Groves, as I mentioned, obviously, just another path. You know what I mean? So we'll see what happens. Seahome 59, Warren Mott 29. Man, Seahome bounced back in a big way. 59 points against Warren Mott. They lost three straight games. Now, albeit those three games were against North Farmington, where they lost by one on a heartbreak. They were absolutely destroyed by West Bluefield. And then they were destroyed by Groves. So, basically, this was a... I don't know what happened. Seaholm exploded offensively with the Veer attack. Or Warren Mott's just not very good defensively. I mean, or Warren Mott... I don't think Warren Mott's seen a team all year that can run a Veer against them. I just don't think they have. So when I look at that game, and there was some, it was interesting because, you know, I thought, you know, coming into the matchup, I thought Seahome would be a team that really, um, Seahome was a team that, you know, didn't score a lot in the last three weeks. 59 points is just outstanding. That's just insane. It is absolutely insane. With what they did. I mean, that kind of tells you something right there. What the Maples did. They were dominant. They were they were dominant. Now, albeit I'm a little concerned about what happened with their defense. Obviously, giving up 29 points is not a good sign. Um, but you know, at the start offensively, putting up um 59 points, that's the good sign. So now we had the Battle of Birmingham Part 2 um, in that district final. We're going to talk about that one in a little bit. But, you know, obviously you know that they would have to see each other again. So that's going to be the case here in the Battle of Birmingham Part 2 in Beverly Hills. So we'll see how that goes. And then let's look at the, um, look at, let's look at the, um, the Farmington district here. Um, Orchard Lake St. Mary's 42-7 against North Farmington. I said this on the pod last week. I said this was going to be a terrible match for North Farmington, and it proved that way. I mean, it really did. I mean, Orchard Lake St. Mary's had playmakers on both sides of the ball. You have D1 commits on that side. I know Charles White's a D1 commit. You have Darren Jones, who had a big di big game for Orchard Lake St. Mary's with two touchdowns. Um... Shut down Terrence James and shut down Duke Blanche. I mean, it was going to be a tough matchup anyway for Coach um, John Herstein and the Raiders. It was going to be really difficult, and it really showed in that game. Um, just, just stunning, just to score the results of that game, and it was really, really interesting to see how that one went and. You know, North Farm, and I'll be honest with you, North Farmington, yeah, they had the number one seed in their district. They had the number one seed. But when you had to play Orchard Lake St. Mary's, you can, that, was, that, was a, that was a sentence. I mean, that really was a sentence. And then you look at the other side of it. I mean, when you look at Snooze's map, um, a couple, um, when he did his projections before they did the districts, um, he had Orchard Lake St. Mary's going to East Lansing. That could have been a better matchup for North Farmington if they would have sent them west. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, and they sent Milford west, <laughs> and look what happened there. And Milford got swamped by Dexter. And and obviously, East Lansing, you know, I think they're still playing um, as we speak. So, we'll see. I mean, we'll see, but for North Farmington, Great year for the Raiders, Coach John Hurston. He had a nice year, um, winning the Blue Championship. Um, they do lose a lot. I mean, I mean, like, so it'd be really interesting to see how the Raiders do um, next season. So they'll be a team to keep an eye on as we go forward, um, heading in the future. Farm. Here was a shocker for me: Farmington thirty-nine, Lakeland thirteen. I mean, goodness gracious! I mean. Farmington trailed at halftime 10 to nothing. And then they exploded for 39 points in the second half. 
outscored Lakeland 39-3. to That's insane. They shut down Lakeland's best player. Didn't even let him score a touchdown. That kind of tells you something right there. But it's also fully the first time that Farmington's healthy. When you look at Coach Jason Albrecht's team, they were injured almost all year long. I mean, this was the first time they were fully healthy since the Oak Park game. I mean, there was a reason why I had Farmington ranked to start the year. I had Farmington as my favorite to win the blue because of the experience they had back. And then, unfortunately, things didn't go well. It started off rough. I mean, like, they had that win against Oak Park. Lost their quarterback and Julian Johnson. They were not the same team. Um, they lost to North Farmington. So when I look at that matchup, you kind of think about it. Is, you know, this is the first time they're fully healthy. First time that they've got everybody together. And yet, offensively, they struggled for a half. And Coach Jason Albright admitted it on his interview with Brandon Foss from Whole Town Life. He said that, you know, they... They struggled out the gate. They had a terrible practice on that Monday. And they did. And then suddenly, you know what I mean? They had a bounce back second half. And they shut down a really good Lakeland offense. And you look at what Lakeland's more than capable of. The Eagles, I mean, they got a good running back. And they and they held them. They shut down the zone read. I mean, they shut down the um, read option. And that says something. That says something. Now, I also think otherwise, the OA is a tougher conference than the Lakes Valley. And it kind of has been showing when you look at it. I mean, obviously, you look at the where Farmington was this year in the blue. Um, they played but they played some really good teams. I mean, you, they played um I mean, they played some good non conference teams and they played like Orion. Um, you know, but then you're in your league, you're playing against um North Farmington, you're playing against um Troy, Troy Athens, um Oak Park, Seahome. I mean, that's not easy competition right there. So, you know, for Coach Albright, you know what I mean? Give credit where credit's due. Um, for North, for Farmington, um, you know, j this is a team that's fully healthy. But now they're going to have to play their best game of the year if they're going to want to go on to the regional, especially because they got Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, Lumen. Um which is going to be really difficult despite them getting a home game at Falcon Field. Um, Orchard Lake St. Mary's is, going to, is a really dangerous matchup for, um, for North Far for, um, for Farmington. It's a really dangerous matchup um, for the Falcons. And I think that's going to be really interesting to see how um, Farmington responds. Coach Albrecht responds um, compared to um, what happened with the, uh, with coach John Herstein in the North in North Farmington when they took on Orchard Lake St. Mary's last week over in um, Ron Holland Field. So we'll see how that one goes for um, for um, Farmington this week as they take on um, Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, and then let's go to Division Three. Uh, Division Three, Avondale had no issue with Redford. Um, Thurston, they won that one. Um, I think it was 43-6 was that score, or 43-7. Um, but... Avenel shut down a really good Eagles offense. They, they shut down a battle-tested Eagles team. Defensively, they look really good. Offensively, they've really picked things up. Um, Coach Bob Myers done a really nice job. And for Avenel's reward, they get to go play Wild Lake Western on the road. And that is not a good match for Avenel. Avenel's a team that runs the wing tee. Um, for Avondale to have a chance against Wild Lake Western, they're going to have to slow the game down and play their style of football because there's no way that they can't, that they can match up um, with, with the, um, with what coach Corey Sroach can do. Um, obviously coach Corey Sroach knows the OA quite well. He was at Farmington. He was the head coach there. So he does know Avondale quite well. Um, but Bob Meyer, of course, knows Wall Lake very well with his days as head coach at Wall Lake Central. So, it should be an interesting matchup, but last season, Avondale did fall to Western uh, in the district final. Same situation here for Avondale. Um, taking on um, 
taking on Wall Lake Western. So it'll be really difficult for um, Coach Bob Meyer and his team taking on a really good Yellow Jack, taking on a really good um, Warriors team. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes between them. Um, you know, so we'll see. I mean, on the other side in Division Three, they're either taking on Linden or Mason. And of course, Linden having that big upset against Fenton, where they were really impressive in that one, shutting out the Tiger, shutting down the Tigers. I mean, I'm still at shock over that one. I mean, just couldn't believe what happened there in that game. Um, and then, obviously, you look at um, you know, and then on the other side, you look at um. You know, Mason, Mason, we know is very good. I mean, Mason played Wall Lake Western earlier in the year. Um, Wall Lake Western went into Mason and won that one. So it'll be a tall order for Avondale to go on to Wall Lake Western to take on the um, Warriors. So we'll see how that one goes. Now let's go to Division 4 here. Um, Division 4, this is pretty much the most interesting one. Because Harper Woods was coming in as a three seed. And they were fifth in Division Four when it came to playoff. And I don't. I wonder what Coach Rob Oden was thinking. I wonder what he was thinking. Having the three seed, and you're having to go to Redford Union, a team you beat in Week One, forty-three twenty-one, basically in a span of two days. Um. And then, you know, Redford Union's got more points than you, despite you beating them earlier in the year. So that kind of tells you something right there. And then you look at the other side, because you're playing on Saturday night, and then you just heard Dearborn Divine Child beat Madison Heights Lampier, who was the top team in Division Four when it came to playoff points. So now you're now you're motivated. To say okay, we can get a home game here. We can get home field here. And truth be told, Harper Woods goes in the Redford and beats the Panthers forty six to six. That was stunning, considering how how Redford Union was during the summer. And then week one when they had Harper Woods tied at 21. So when you look at that stretch from 21-21 in week one, when they had that delay, I mean, you look at that game, I mean, Harper Woods has outscored them. Harper Woods has outscored them. I mean, 68 68 to 6 in the and in the, ever since that game was tied at 21. That says something right there. That's a credit to Coach Odin and his defense. That's credit to Harper Woods right there. I mean, obviously, Dakota Garant's had a nice start. He's had a nice um he's been playing well. Obviously, when you look at a quarterback like Nick Rushdell back, that's big. Kobe Bailey's starting to play well. You look at the offensive line, it's starting to play well. Defensively, Harper Woods is starting to play well. They're turning things around quickly. But they got a tough matchup looming with Dearborn Divine Child coming up. Really tough matchup. I mean, I was surprised. I was really impressed with what the Falcons did against the Rams. I was really impressed what Dearborn Divine Child did. Against Mass Knights Lampert. Roy Ozerowski is a heck of a coach. And yet, Dearborn Divine my child shut down Mass Knights Lampert. In their building. On their field. That says something right there. <laughs> and now, you got a game Friday night. Harper Woods has a home game. Dearborn Divine my child has to go in the, is going into Harper Woods. It's not a far trip. Dearborn and Harper Woods, they're not, they're not too far. They're not eagerly far. I mean, obviously, Dermot's going to have to go to Detroit and then to get to Harper Woods. Um, so that's going to be really interesting, that match between Dermot and and Harper Woods. And then that winner will either face Croswell Lex or, um, I mean, like, 
and a crossbow lex or um I gotta figure out the other one. I mean like it's on the tip of my tongue here. Um but crossbow lex really looked the part here. Uh, now Harper was played Crosswell Lex last year. So it's either it's either Crosswell Lex or Marysville. And Marysville, we know, is a scary team. Marysville's a good team. I mean, I I was thinking if Harper Woods were to play Marysville, that could be a fun matchup. That really could be. Because Marysville, yeah, they're coming in playing good football. And obviously they're in the blue water. Um, and I know how tough the blue water is. I know how good that conference is. And, but Harper Woods, we know, has played a really difficult schedule. They played one of the most, um, you know, they, they're in one of the toughest divisions in the white, playing against teams like Groves. They played Oxford, played nobody Detroit Catholic Central earlier in the year. Harper Woods, I think, has got a great chance to make a serious run. They do. Um, they could see Goodrich in the um in the state semis. And that says something right there. Really does. So who knows? So we'll see what happens. But for Coach Odin, that's a big win going into Redford, um, knocking off Redford Union on the road. <laughs> now you get now they get a home game. Um taking on a good a good Dearborn Divine Child team. They're loaded with proven experience, proven talent. So they're going to have their hands full. That is for sure. So we'll see how that one goes. I mean, we're going to see how that one goes. Um, that should be a really interesting matchup between the Falcons and the Pioneers um, this week over at Harper Woods. So we'll see how that one goes. All right, now and we're going to go to my picks here for um, this week. Um, this week's games. Um, we're gonna start with D four. Um, Harper Woods and Dearborn Devon Child. Um, obviously, the Dearborn Devon Child is really impressive against Harper against um, Mass Knights Lampier. Um, so they're not afraid to go into. They're not afraid to go in there into Harper Woods and win. But I just think Harper Woods has played a tougher schedule. I mean, they played a more brutal schedule. They played a more Brutal conference. Um, I think Nate Washlow, when he gets hot, he is one of the best quarterbacks in the state. Kobe Bailey, when he gets hot, it's probably one of the best running backs in the state. Dakota Grant, um, don't need to say much about him. I mean, a lot of combinations to Jacob Oden. Um, obviously, I know, you know, of course, um, Jacob Oden obviously is, um, is um, Coach Oden's son, but um, also... Durant is also Coach Odin's nephew. So, in this game here, this one's a no-brainer for me. I'm going to take Harper Woods over um, Dearborn Divine Child. I think the Pioneer schedule really prepares them here for this one. And I think they have that championship experience. That's a big deal. Um, you know, I think that's going to show in that game. And I really think that's going to be what I think is going to be the case here between those two teams. So I got Harper Woods winning over um, Dearborn Divine Child. Um, I would say this is tight, but I think Harper Woods pulls away late in the second half, and I think that's going to be where I think it's going to be the key there in that one. Um, Division three, we got Avondale taking on Wild Lake Western. And this is an interesting game. This is going to be really interesting. Obviously, last year, Wild Lake Western had no problem with Avondale. I know Sean Cotter's been really curious about this game with Avondale. I know that um he has been saying that, you know, this is a good opportunity for Avondale you know, for um Wall Lake Western to make a deep run in the postseason. He feels that Wall Lake Western's got postseason aspirations. Obviously, you know, they had that big one against Mason, which is a big deal. Um Avondale, they're gonna have to open it up if they want any chance of pulling off the upset. Um, do I see Avondale pulling off the upset here? I honestly don't, and I think there's a lot of reasons why. I think Wall Lake Western, they got a heck of a running back who's really good. They got a good quarterback. Um, but the running back's the real deal over there, and I think, honestly, when I look at that matchup, it's it's going to be, and Wall Lake Western's got a really good defense. 
Um, so it's going to be a tall order for them. And I think, honestly, bottom line is I really think that the um, Warriors, they're going to move on here. Um, I think it'll be tight early. But I just think at the end of the day here, I just think that um, while they question with their athleticism and their um, experience, um, it's going to make it too much for Avondale for, to handle. So I got the Warriors here knocking off the Yellow Jackets. Um, Sally ending um, Avondale's season for the second straight year. So we'll see how that one goes there in that matchup there. Um, on the Division II, um, we got Farmington taking on Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, this is a tough matchup for Farmington because Orchard Lake St. Mary's has experience. They played in the Catholic League, tougher conference than the OAA, people say. Farmington, though, has not been healthy all year. They have not, I mean, like, but you look at players like Darren Jones, you look at, um, they got a Michigan State come in over there, I think, and, um, Charles White's over there, um. It's going to be really interesting there. Um, I think if Farmington, they got a chance, but they got to play almost perfect if they want to upset Orchard Lake St. Mary's, um, which I think they got a chance. Do I see it happening? Probably not. I mean, like, I just think, honestly, here, Orchard Lake St. Mary's will be too much for um, Farmington. I think it's a tight game. It wouldn't surprise me if Farmington does upset Orchard Lake St. Mary's. But if Farmington were to pull up the upset, I can just imagine how crazy the city of Farmington would be. Um, but you got to get credit where credit's due. Coach Jason Albrecht's done a really nice job with that team, with that program, really building that team into a perennial power. Um, you know, but they got a veteran team too. So it'll be interesting. But I, I think, honestly, I got them. Um, but Orchard Lake St. Mary's would be too much. I mean, the way they played against North Farmington, they just basically tore North Farmington to shreds, um, especially on the ground. I'm really concerned about Farmington's run defense. Um, so it'll be really interesting, but I, I just think Orchard Lake St. Mary's will win that one. Um, I don't think it's a blowout, but I think it'll be maybe by two scores. We'll see how that one goes there. Then we had the Battle of Birmingham, Groves and Seaholm. Um, this one, I think this is going to be interesting because... You know, last time these two teams played, it was 35 nothing in favor of Groves over, C over Seaholm. Um, Groves is still motivated. I know Groves wants to get back at Seaholm after beating him twice last year. Um, I think that it's a game where I, I just, I think I see the same result, sadly, here. Um, you know, I just think that Seaholm will be, um, I just think Seaholm, um, you know, last season, Seaholm had the experience. They had the talent. Um, but then again, in the Battle of Birmingham, anything's possible. I mean, last season, I mean, a couple of years ago, um, Seaholm knocked off Groves in the regular season. Groves won, won in the playoffs. I mean, a couple of times, Groves won in the regular season. Seaholm beat him in the playoffs. I mean, this could go any, any, this could go any way. I mean, like, but I just think this year, Groves has got too much experience. Um... <laughs> They got too much experience, and I think it's going to show here in this one. So I'm going to take the Falcons over the Maples here. Um, of course, the winner of this is going to probably see either Warren D.S. South, Growth Point South. Um, more and more likely, I think it's going to be D.S. South, who, they're, who um, Groves or Seaholm will see. Um, if it is Seaholm, I think um, Seaholm will have to go to Warren uh, or go to um, Wayne State. Or if it's Groves, one of the South to go to Beverly Hills. So it should be really interesting. And I think it'll be really interesting to see how it plays out. But I think I think I think Groves wins this one. I don't know if it's close, but I just think that the difference in this game is gonna be is the um is the um is the Falcons experience. And I think that's gonna be the difference here in this matchup. That'll be for sure here. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, we'll see how it goes. Now on to Division I. Um, West Bloomfield takes on Nobody Detroit Catholic Central. Um, when I look at this matchup on paper, it doesn't look good for West Bloomfield. It doesn't look good. I mean, I know Tyler Keith extremely well. And he probably would say the same thing. 
But I still think, in my heart, West Boomfield's got a chance in this one. Offense has to play well. They have to play, I don't know if I would say almost perfect, but if they can get some stops defensively, especially with that young defense, then they could give nobody Detroit Catholic Central problems. Um, but Bo Jackson, I'll be curious to see how he's going to feel playing his former team. Um, I think for the key for West Boom is going to be Josh Tate. If he can run the ball, <laughs> then it opens up the um, opens up Elijah Durham and um, Cam Flowers. Um, so West Bloom is going to have their hands full with nobody Detroit Catholic Central. Um, I did think about this game pretty much for about three hours. I thought about this game, and I thought about tempted to go with the upset, but I just I just don't see it. I mean, like. I, I just don't see it, unfortunately. Um, you know what? I take that back. I do see an upset. I'm going to take the Elboys here. I think West Bloomer takes the upset here. Over and over, Detroit Catholic Central. I just think that, um, you know, the Lakers find enough offensively. I think they're going to shock Nobody Detroit Catholic Central. I know Selena Belva will wait on the other side. Um, but I just think that the Lakers, you know, for some strange reason, some some magical thing, that Coach Jack Hilbers has in there over at West Bloomfield. I think West Bloomfield finds a way, pulls off the unthinkable, and I think the Lakers, they're going to they're gonna surprise some people. Um, I think Elijah Durham gets the winning touchdown. Um, it, I think it goes overtime. So, but I think West Bloomfield um, goes in there, pulls off the unthinkable upset. Um, shocks no by Detroit Catholic Central. I mean... It's going to be an interesting test, I mean, like, for sure. But I don't know if CC's been tested all year long. I know they've been really good all year long. But West Bloomfield, you know, there's something about the Lakers. If they stay disciplined, if they stay um, they stay the course, play good football, not get rattled, not, get, not, not become undisciplined, I think they're going to pull it off. So I think the Lakers do go in there in an OVI, upset CC, and I think they're going to move on here in this matchup here. Um, next, we have Clarkston and Adams. Um, Clarkston obviously coming off that impressive win against Lake Orion. Adams coming off a win against Stony Creek. Um, this game, it's a rematch. Um, Adams won 28-10 um, over Clarkston. I think that was in week four. Ryland Waters absolutely devoured Clarkston's defense. Um, Adams' defense shut down um, Alex Wachensko. Um I really think this is going to be a tight game. And I know it's always hard to be a team twice in one year. Um, Adams obviously does not have Ryland Waters in this game. But they have a guy in Mateo Humber who can run the ball. But Clarkson's defense has really played in a different level. Um, as of late, they've, they've, been, they've been a much different team since that week nine game against Utica Eisenhower where they just completely shut the Eagles down. They've held... Utica Eisenhower and Lake Orion to 19 points in the last two weeks. That is that is winning football for a defense that was just absolutely shredded earlier in the year. Um, but in this game here, I think the fear is going to be too much for Clarkston. Um, I, I just I really look at that matchup and I just think that it's going to be a tight game. I think Adams will play time possession football against Clarkston. They'll keep that offense off the field. Um, like they did earlier in the year at Adams. Um, I, I really like Adams in this one over Clarkston because of the veer, the time possession football. And I and, and if if it wouldn't surprise me if Clarkson wins this game because of you know, if they can get enough possessions. I, I just don't know if I see Clarkston getting enough possessions um in this game. So it'll be really interesting to see, but um I'm gonna take Adams in this one over Clarkston. And then last but not least, we got Oxford taking on Grand Blank. Um, this is going to be a fun match. Grand Blank's got a really good quarterback, good receiver, but it's Oxford. Oxford, good running back in Luke Johnson. Um, Jack Hendricks has proven to be a really good player, obviously a quarterback. The defense has been solid. Um, I really like how um, Eli Carpenter's been playing. I like how um, I like I really like how Jake Champagne's been playing. Um, Eli Tabbert's been playing really good. Um, they got, they got line play. I mean, they got the complete, complete pieces. And I think Oxford, 
is going to go and out tough Grand Blank. I really think Oxford wins this game at Grand Blank because of their physicality. I think that's the difference in this game here. I, I don't, Grand Blank does not handle physicality pretty well after that game with Romeo. Um, I really think Oxford's going to go in there. It would not surprise me if Oxford wins up a Grand Blank by two scores. I think it would be the case here. And I think Oxford, obviously, this is a dangerous team. And I think Oxford, senior heavy team, experienced team, they might be on the verge of history. Um, and that would say a lot, especially with how um how the community's been. So in this game, I'm taking Oxford over Grand Blank. And I think Oxford um goes on and wins um I don't know how long it's been with the district championship drought, but um I think they go on and win that. So we'll see what happens in that one. So I'm gonna take Oxford over Grand Blake in that one. It's a really interesting game. All right, now I'm gonna look at volleyball here. Obviously, of course, volleyball. Regional projections are on my blog at Sangway for this fifty at blogspot.com. We got also got a lot of updates as well on the blog as well. Basketball, we're gonna start previewing the basketball um basketball pretty soon, so we'll see what happens going forward there. We're gonna sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Sangway for this fifty at blogspot.com for latest information around the OA. Alright guys, take care, God bless, and I'll see you all next week. God bless you. See y'all. See y'all next week. God bless you.